Nuclear waste is a huge mounting global problem. In fact, it is a colossal future catastrophe in the making unless countries around the world begin heavily investing in effective, safe, sustainable, and permanent nuclear waste disposal facilities. Surprisingly, Finland is the only country in the world that has taken responsibility for nuclear waste disposal by constructing the world's largest, most advanced, and permanent deep underground nuclear waste tomb called Onkolo which is supposed to last more than 100,000 years. Why is nuclear waste so dangerous to humans and the environment? And why is it so important to keep it isolated from Earth's biosphere for thousands of years? Today, we are going to explore how Finland is leading the world in solving nuclear waste problems with this massive nuclear tomb, Onkalo. Believe it or not, from 1946 to 1993, many rich countries disposed of nuclear waste in the ocean. They simply placed such radioactive material in large steel containers, such as drums, surrounded the material with concrete, and dumped them in the ocean. Mind you, that a good percentage of these materials will remain radioactive and quite hazardous for thousands of years. Right now, there are more than 445 operational nuclear power plants in 34 countries, and the number is expected to double by 2070 because nuclear power has been labeled as green. Of course, it is not green, but the nuclear lobby is just that powerful. Even Bill Gates and Warren Buffett launched a nuclear power business. Now, one would think a country like Russia, China, or the USA has mastered the technology needed to prevent future disasters associated with nuclear waste, but in reality, they are adding to the problem because their disposal methods are temporary and do not guarantee spillage into the biosphere where life thrives. Only two countries have taken the matter of nuclear waste seriously. They are Finland and Sweden. You are probably thinking, what about recycling spent nuclear fuel? The answer is simple. It produces more nuclear waste, which eventually has to be disposed of too. So it is not much of a solution. Check this fact that encouraged Finland to beat the rest of the world in solving its nuclear waste problem. From the early 1950s to 2023, more than 410,000 tons of spent fuel have been generated by the world. And most of that amount is still simply unmanageable and poses a serious threat to humanity. Not to mention a decent part of this amount is plutonium-239, which can be used to make nuclear weapons. This leads to our main topic of the day. How is Finland leading the world in solving nuclear waste problems with the massive tomb Onkalo. Finland has just fired up Europe's largest nuclear reactor called the Olkiluoto 3 reactor after many years of delays. This reactor means that Finland now possesses five active nuclear reactors in two nuclear power plants on the shores of the Baltic Sea that generate a little over 40% of its electricity. These reactors are a very important part of its plan to achieve carbon neutrality. Mind you that even though Finland has about 6 million people, it consumes massive amounts of electricity because it is a very cold country for about 8 months per year. But more importantly, because it is an advanced heavy industries hub, which means it needs lots of electricity. This means that Finland had to find a way to get rid of large quantities of high-level nuclear waste, which is extremely dangerous and remains highly radioactive for thousands of years. The solution is the Posiva Oi facility, or Onkalo, which is scheduled to become operational in 2025. Let's now decipher this state-of-the-art, super-secure, immensely massive, deep underground nuclear waste tomb. The location of Onkalo is right next to the three nuclear reactors in Olkiluoto on the country's southwestern coast. From one look at the site, one would probably think that it is just too beautiful to be the real site of the world's first and largest tomb for the most dangerous nuclear waste in existence. The facility extends up to 455 meters below the ground in solid rock in an area that is far from fault lines, hence no earthquakes happen in the area. The construction work of Onkalo started in June 2004. The reason it took such a long time has to do with the fact that the process is complex and involves new engineering techniques and custom-made heavy machinery. It is not a mere deep underground dump, but rather an actual massive, very tight and secure vault full of separated, sophisticated capsules that will host nuclear waste. 
The tomb consists of a spiral-shaped access tunnel, many vertical shafts for personnel, canisters, and ventilation, about 40 kilometers of tunnels, and several technical rooms. Triple-layered canisters are placed in separate holes that are drilled in the deepest and most solid parts of the rock zones, where water seepage from rock crevices is as small as possible. Interestingly, this facility will continue to operate for 100 years before it is permanently sealed. The reason for this is to allow retrieval of the canisters in case a new, better, and more effective technology for the disposal of high-level nuclear waste is invented. So far, nearly 600,000 cubic meters of rock have been excavated, while much of the blasted rock has been utilized in earthwork. In many areas where it was deemed necessary, the rock was sealed with grouting and structural waterproofing. Grouted rebar bolts and shotcrete were also used for rock reinforcement. An intriguing one-of-a-kind 30 tons maneuverable drilling machine for the deposition tunnels was made in Finland specifically for this project. The final disposal of canisters is based on the multi-barrier principle. Each disposable canister is placed in a vertical deposition hole and then surrounded by crushed bentonite. Each deposition hole is approximately 8 meters deep and 1.75 meters in diameter. Automated guided vehicles with buffer installation systems are used for both the buffer and deposition tunnel granular backfill installation systems, which are used to transfer the granular material in the deposition tunnel, filling it from the floor to the ceiling. The process of encapsulating the extremely hot and radioactive spent fuel rods from nuclear reactors every three to four years is also quite complex due to the extreme dangers involved. The nuclear fuel rods from Finland's reactors weigh about a quarter of a ton each and have to be replaced every four years at the most. These rods are first cooled in the plant's water pools for one year before they are transferred to the interim storage facility near the nuclear power plant. There, the temperature and activity of the rods will continue to decrease. Upon final disposal, when approximately 40 years have passed from the removal of spent fuel from the reactor, it will retain only one one-thousandth of its original radioactivity level. Upon final disposal at Onkelo, the canister walls and a few meters of rock around it are enough to stop the radiation released by spent fuel entirely. The canisters are made of a thick copper shell and spheroidal graphite cast iron. The length of the canisters also varies depending on where the spent fuel comes from. Once all fuel rods have been transferred inside the canister, it is filled with argon gas and sealed tightly with the inner steel lid of the canister. The main concept behind all of this is engineering barriers that would prevent radiation from ever escaping. The technology includes the fuel state, final disposal canister, buffer bentonite, and tunnel backfill. As for the bedrock, it serves as a natural barrier. After installing the canister and buffer material, the deposition tunnels are filled with a granule mixture, then a wedge-shaped massive super-heavy steel-reinforced concrete plug is constructed at the end of the deposition tunnel filled with bentonite clay. The work in this facility will continue until the year 2120, after which the open central tunnels, the associated vehicle connections, auxiliary rooms at the deposition depth, and all other tunnels leading to the surface will be permanently closed with natural materials compatible with surrounding rock. Do you think nuclear energy deserves to be labeled as green? Even though it generates massive amounts of extremely deadly and hazardous radioactive waste that is extremely hard and expensive to isolate from Earth's biosphere? And what do you think about this project? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you!